Hello, everyone. Today we are going to talk about why you need a rabbit, a bunny, or however you want to call it, in your homestead or farm. I've been collecting a series of clips where I showed you how I use it, the methods that I use it with, and how successful or not it's been. Now, most of you know that one of the easiest way to have meat in your homestead is by starting with rabbits. They can breed every 30 days and they pretty much are very efficient at it. You don't need a lot of room and just to make things easier, you can even feed them a lot of stuff that you're growing in your garden. So in today's video, I wanted to show you if you choose not to use them for meat purposes, why I think you still need a rabbit in your farm or homestead. And if you're gar into gardening, either you know flower gardens or food garden it is definitely a lifesaver you can buy a 50 pound feed if you don't want to feed them your garden stuff you can buy a 50 pound feed and i can have it for almost a year with one rabbit so you don't have to have a lot of them but me in particular, I want a few more because I've seen the difference that it makes in my garden. I've seen the difference that it makes in the soil and overall what I can get out of something that really costs just a little bit of money and it gives me a lot more back. For whatever reason, this was doing great, sweet mint, and now it's dying. Now, I don't know if it'd be able to come back from the root, but I'm gonna transplant it. I'm gonna put it somewhere else with a bunch of fertilizer, which is my bunny <laughs> manure. So this is rubber manure, potting soil. I'm gonna make a hole and do all the planting. a little bit on top so it keeps composting it had some compost underneath I'm try to do it like this look I'm growing a potato in there I'm gonna have to do the hole a little bit bigger because I don't know where the roots of this are really Take a bunch of water just to get to the compost. Direct watering so it goes below instead of doing kind of the outside area. Now if after all this it still doesn't make it, I mean it was dead already. But if there's any chance, that's about three gallons of water that I put in there and it's still absorbing. So I'm gonna keep going and add more. So a bunch of rabbit manure, potting soil, about four gallons of water and lots of love and we'll see if it comes back. 
do rabbit manure on top as well. I mean, it is not a hot manure, so it's not gonna burn it. So this is mint, sweet mint, and I don't know if you remember, but it was dead completely. <laughs> and now, look at this, it's trying to spread everywhere, which I knew it would happen if I let it out of the container, but look at this, I mean, this is just a miracle, really. It was completely dry. It had just a, a couple of leaves that were still green, but it's definitely proof that a lot of rabbit manure, you can bring them back. Now you have to keep them under control if it's mint. And because it's mint, and mint, you know, tends to be a little bit invasive, I have a couple of other examples of how rabbit manure really saved another plant. These are my hollyhocks that were doing so good on the other side of the garden. I put a bunch of manure here and hopefully they will come back, but since it was barely transplanted, they suffer when it's sunny outside and they kind of get better when it gets dark. I am hoping that's the case here, but I kind of messed up a lot of its roots, so I'm hoping I can bring it back. A little bit of rabbit manure to see if I can help it or if I destroy the root system altogether. So these are hollyhocks, I'm supposed to be red ones. I got some roots from Walmart, I think for three dollars or something like that and I put it in a container initially and then it started to not do so great so I decided to move them here which is going to be my permanent flower garden and it started to struggle oh look at this seems like it's gonna flower you see the little buds there so this is and you saw it it was dead I mean a few days later, I still didn't know if it was going to make it. It was all sad and I thought maybe I damaged the root, maybe, you know, it's not going to take the transplant. But this is another great example of how rabbit manure really can make a difference. And as you can see, right now it's pretty dry, it's been super hot lately and so I have to water more often and I haven't and it's still doing great. And as you can see, I do have clay, clay in my soil, so it's really easy to choke a plant and it's really easy to dry it out. So it's definitely the difference of making some kind of material organic matter. That'd be, if you can add organic matter, it's even better, but if not, <laughs> this is my hollyhock now that it's actually thriving. And then I'm gonna do this one. This is uh, Marino Blue Heliotrope. It's great in containers, borders on mixed planting. Partly sunny. Okay, I think it will be good here. Uh, as you can see, I am leaving room between them because I want them to expand. Then this one is another one I found at the hardware store. It's a begonia, tuberous begonia. I have to look it up. But as you can see, it does have a few flowers. It's struggling because I transplanted it yesterday.
Now this is a begonia that I really didn't add more soil to it or did anything crazy, yet it's flowering. And again, in my opinion, it has to do with more with the rabbit manure than anything. It has been surviving on her own, really, this clay soil. So I'm gonna add a little bit of manure around it just to feed it. And then this one is um, there's some roses, as you can see there. They're doing great. They're kind of expanding. They were Those are my roses. Still in clayish soil, but still thriving and putting new buds, as you can see right there. So this is one of the oregano plants that is dying. Um, as you can see, I just water it and it's it's all curled. And it's not doing great. I'm gonna do two of them today, and I'll show you how they come back to life, just with the help of rabbit manure. So I made the hole dry, then I put the water, then I put the rabbit manure, and then I make a little soupy <laughs> mix. Now I made the deep hole because it's better to kind of mix it a little bit below where you're going to sit their roots. And because I can start getting more soil from the side and mixing it like this and that way I am helping the clay soil or the clay in the soil to be able to hold water nutrients and at the same time feed once I get to this point I continue to add more soil and mix it or earth really and mix it and then I bring the plant and I stick it here since it's wet if it's a little bit too high I can make a little hole very easily and the roots will go around and start looking for water and nutrients I add a little bit more around it so I know this plant is kind of in the ICU.
and it will continue to feed it from the top every time by water.